fast food is everywhere. He likes KFC, chicken nuggets, kebabs, fish and chips, anything that's bad for you, he'll eat. Our kids just can't get enough of it. But he does love fizzy pop. A lot of cans, probably on average, say six throughout the day. I got no control of what he eats. And now we're rearing a nation of fast food babies. Banana! I see tooth decay, iron deficiency anemia, rickets even. It's a ticking time bomb of massive health problems. They are a recipe for heart disease, diabetes. We meet three families with three different fast food problems. A clan of takeaway addicts whose diet is shared by even their tiniest tot. A 19-month-old whose mum and dad are frightened by his refusal to eat healthy food. Michael. Eat. Michael. And a three-year-old whose mum has never cooked him a healthy meal. Can I have a small down of meat? with chips, with cheese and mayonnaise, please. All the families desperately want help. They're teaming up with experts to see if their babies can kick the habit. I just think maybe I just need to just be reined back in and just start from scratch with him. But if I've got an expert's help and I've got someone telling me what to do, then I'll be able to change it. The 19-month-old Cuba fish from Cardiff is a fast-food baby. Oh. He likes McDonald's, he likes KFC, he likes an Indian. Uh, he likes his pizzas, also his chips with plenty of salt, that's him. Cuba has one big problem. His whole family are takeaway addicts. Most people have a Friday night takeaway, <laughs> um, but we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night takeaway. <laughs> There you go, Daddy. Thank you. You're welcome. They've been ordering for years, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheese. I'm ready for food. The takeaways are soaked in harmful saturated fat. Cuba's consuming half a litre of oil a week. Ooh. So what are you having then, Shay? I have chicken, please. Chicken. Yeah. Construction assessor Simon could be a driving force behind this fast food feeding. Are we hungry still? Yes. Good. Guaranteed Friday and Saturday for me on the weekend. Uh, I'll take the kids to McDonald's. Simon's long working hours means he spoils Cuba rotten. It's hard to say no to him. You know, he's, he's got a lovely big cute smile on him. If Cuba's mum Sam does cook a home meal, the reception is lukewarm. Sam, your pasta. Nice. <laughs> it's half cooked. Oh, do you know what? When you buy, do you when you buy pasta from a shop, right? Yeah. Do you know when you get those chilled ones? When you eat it, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. Right, they were then. It's like shop bought pasta then. Nobody eats it, and then they all run off, and I'm left with just mess. Does anybody want this pasta? No. Oh. Sam works two days a week as a banking consultant. The other five are spent cleaning her home. Meticulously. I just fed up a cleaning, so if I can means eating out, avoids that. Then doing another lot of dishes, brilliant. Cuba and sisters Cleo and Shay also have free reign to plunder the sweetie cupboard. If I had to say a number, I would say at least 30 times throughout the day. He helps himself. I got no control of what he eats. Whilst the girls have learnt self-control, Cuba hasn't. The toddler knocks all the fast food back with an unbelievable amount of cola. Up to six cans a day. It's out of control. 
Cuba can't sleep and Sam is now worried about his health. I'm totally conscious of it now. And I just think maybe I just need to just be reined back in and just start from scratch with him. I just don't know where to start, really, I think, with it. Sam is prepared for change. But is Simon. I'm not too sure about the fast food. I quite enjoy that. I think he enjoys that, so I wouldn't like to stop too much of that. The person responsible for sorting out family health in the local community is Jane Imperato. She's a hugely experienced family health visitor who spent 20 years coaxing families onto healthy diets. I think that I am reasonably firm. I think I'm a good parent to my parents. Hi there. <laughs> Go in there. Look what we've got here. Let's have a look at those. Wow, those are pretty, aren't they? Cuba has no choice in what he eats. To crack his problem, Jane will have to crack the whole family. Tell me all about what's been happening oh. and what you feel your main issues are. Oh, we're just absolutely <laughs> drained with him, to be honest with you, Jane. Yeah. It's, um, he's not eating properly. I'm totally aware that he's not. How um, many takeaways do you have in a week? At least five. At least five. You don't know what's in those takeaways. <laughs> and generally speaking, they're going to be high in fats and salt okay. and sugar. And basically, they are a recipe for heart disease, diabetes, um, okay. cancer. Okay. Okay. His diet at the moment, Sam. Too bad. Worse than bad, it's dreadful. Oh, I say. It's really bad, yes. Cuba is consuming 3,200 calories a day, 700 more than is healthy for a grown man. There are long-term health risks, but in his short 19-month life, Cuba's diet may already be taking its toll. My main concern is that he might be anemic because he's not having um, an iron-rich diet. Right, OK. That's quite scary, really, isn't it? And it's been quite long-term, this diet's been, as well, to be honest with you. How long you. has it been going on? For practically as long as he's been born. In the UK, one in eight toddlers are now iron deficient. This can, in the worst cases, slow a child's development. Cuba will need a blood test to see if he's anemic. Right now, Jane lays down the ground rules for the whole family. We need to start cooking in this household. I want him on three meals a day. <coughs> Sam, it's cooking? It's not all about me, no. Yeah. It's not, no, it's not all about Sam. I, oh. I, I need you to back Sam up. When you're looking after the children, I need you to cook for them. And maybe... Are you going to get to this? Yes, you can. Maybe given during the week. You can cook, Sam. You can cook. It's yeah. just getting the time with myself, obviously. Yeah. Yes, Working from time. home. And were you saying that you didn't like the mess involved in oh, cooking? I, oh, the mess he makes. It's just irritating. I do the dishes and somebody's there behind me cleaning everything up saying, look at all the mess you made. slip and crack my head open. You see, the thing is, is that you've got to get your priorities straight. We, yeah. we need the mess. OK, unfortunately. Sorry about that, Sam. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> The sweetie cupboard, Simon, going. it has to be gone. Are you yeah. listening to this? No, yeah, I'm serious. Like We're really yeah. serious. Okay. Seriously, it has to go. So just by getting rid of that, it means that Cuba's going to have to forage for more... Stuff. <laughs> All of his face. <laughs> for more okay. healthy food. Got it's right. healthy. Okay. More bananas. See yours. Mm. Shay. Losing the sweetie cupboard will be particularly tough for Cleo and Shay. Shay, come here, girls. Right, I've got something to tell you. <laughs> what we're going to do is... We're going to get rid of the sweetie cupboard. And you've got to be brave about this. It's not so much that, that, that you're the problem. What's the problem, The problem is your little brother. You've got to set him a good example. What do you think, Shay? Yeah. No. <laughs> what do you think, Leo? No. Oh, well, OK. Sorry, girls. It's happening. OK. The grown-ups yes. are in charge. Control. With me and Dad, yeah. taking control back. Yeah. Yeah, Shay? What are you doing? Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, 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 dear. Come on, Shay. It's a OK, don't let her pull on the old heartstrings. We're not being mean. We're being cruel to be kind. Okay. All right, Shay? Yeah. For the sake of your little brother, really, because he is out, completely out of control. I've never come across a single family before that actually just lived on takeaway food and just did no cooking whatsoever. It was, it's, it's, to an, it's to an extreme, it really is. 
Jane allows just one takeaway a week as motivation. Their diet's been turned on its head. It's all easy to agree. We cook every night and make a plan. It sounds really good and I want to do it. And um, I don't like it. Yeah, we feel really, really sad. I'm not cooking tonight. I'm going to start tomorrow. <laughs> For the Hawinan family in Surrey, it's not fast food eating parents that's the problem. That your lunch? Full time mum Cara and sports event coordinator Gareth eat a balanced diet and prepare 19 month old Michael healthy food for every meal. It's Din Din! <laughs> I actually love cooking and I'll cook dinners f uh, fresh from scratch. We eat pretty healthily, to be honest, yeah. Michael, don't spit. Yes, you have to eat. Yes. Eat your dinner. Yeah. Michael. Michael. Eat. Come on. The trouble is, the more they try and control his eating, Michael. the more Michael rebels. Yeah. That was very... No, you don't do that. You don't do that. Very naughty. Very naughty. Yes, naughty. This is what it's like every meal time. He's not going to eat that, is he? No. It's affecting Cara and Gareth's relationship. Me and Gareth will, um, you know, be stressed at each other because of what's going on and having to clean up all the food and, yeah, it's, it's a stressful time. Michael, sit down, please. Lunchtime. It's lunchtime, OK? Come on. Hey, 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 hey. Every meal ends the same way. Cara and Gareth resort to fast food feeding. It doesn't help that they live directly above a fish and chip shop. Hi. Um, can I get a regular cod and small chips, please? When I give him fast food, I do feel like a bad parent. I really do. But I just think to myself, if he's eating something, that, then, you know, that, that's better than having nothing. Thank you very much, Steve. Bye. Bye, Bye. We've got to feed him. And we can't give him the right things, but uh, you've got to give him something, haven't you? So. The end result is that Michael is one toddler who knows how to get exactly what he wants. The shopping trolley always fills up with his favourite fast food. There you go, Mikey. Do you want to put them in the trolley? Put them in the trolley for us. <laughs> On an average day, like Cuba in Cardiff, he's clocking up a whopping 3,000 calories. Michael's bad habits began after he became seriously ill. Michael came down with meningitis when he was six months old. The doctors were telling us that it was very, very serious. You know, we were sort of preparing ourselves and thinking the worst. Oh, when Michael had meningitis, yeah, it was very stressful. Yeah, I was talking about him nearly dying. Sorry. <laughs> I can't even explain how terrible, I mean, for any child to go through that, especially when it's yours, it just is heartbreaking. Eat up. I think it's definitely affected how we behave with Michael because we give in to him. We just, like, spoil him a bit more than, you know, maybe we would if he hadn't have had meningitis. When most babies are starting to come off milk onto a normal diet, Michael was fighting for his life. For Cara, twice a week, it's a walk of shame into Michael's toddler group. All the other children have 
have taken some fruit and vegetables out of the pots in the middle, put them on their plate, and they're all eating them. I always have to bring stuff with me to put on his plate, otherwise he won't eat what the other children are eating. Come and eat some fruit, Michael. Come and sit down and eat your fruit. I feel really embarrassed as a mum giving my son like sweets and crisps and chocolate and stuff because I do want to give him healthy stuff but it's just because he doesn't eat it I want to give him something rather than nothing but yeah I would say I'm I am embarrassed yeah Cara and Gareth are desperate for help and are meeting Dr Catherine Dendy ex-head of feeding at Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital. Hello, I'm Catherine. I come Hello, to Catherine. see Michael. Nice to meet you. Hi. As a clinical psychologist, she looks at the deep-seated reasons why children refuse healthy food. I've come along actually today to see Michael having a meal mm. and just being able to experience with you what happens. And as far as possible, if you could just do what you would normally do. Yeah, so Catherine must... sits back and observes a typical mealtime. Carrot. Potato. Stop playing with your food. Put it in your mouth. It's yummy. No, no. 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 Come on. Time to eat. Carrot. Please. As usual, Cara and Gareth end up giving in to Michael's demands and put him in his favourite spot on the sofa. OK. Right, do you want to watch your programme? Yeah. And, and have some dindons on your lap? Yeah? In her consultation, Catherine starts with the impact of Michael's meningitis. It seems to me that what's happened to Michael is that this really, really important stage of weaning and building up the new tastes and the new textures has been interrupted mm. and you've been feeling really, really anxious about mm. it. If he starts eating something, you say, great, mm -hmm. you could want more of it. Yeah. And, and it just, it's, it's like a circle, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. Even if he's like That's, the slightest yeah. bit, something's not right, just yeah. the very tiniest bit, I'm, I'm like, oh, there's something yeah, wrong with it. Yeah, yes, right. inside. It's, yeah. nat it's natural though, isn't yeah. it? For, perfectly, perfectly natural. We, you know. He is keen to put his hands into things and try them out. And you actually used a very interesting phrase. You said, don't play with your food, Michael. And I know we're all brought up not to play with <laughs> our food. Right, yeah. And I thought, oh, actually, what we want him to do is play with, with his food. food. His table manners will come later. What I would like you to do is to take him to some classes that are run for little children to help him get used to fruit and veg and actually end up popping them in his mouth and maybe even enjoying them. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> but done, done in a fun way. Yeah. That would be really That would be great, good. wouldn't it, yeah. Catherine will be referring Michael to a children's feeding expert called Lucy Thomas for practical support, while she will work with Cara and Gareth on the reasons behind their anxieties. Right, how many pieces of garlic bread do you want, mate? I'll give you... Two then, to start off with, just in case you want some more. No! Just one then. Harley Thank Evans you. lives in Runcorn. There's no battle here over fruit and veg. He's reached the grand old age of three without his mum ever having cooked him a healthy meal. A milkshake. And what, what is it? It's yellow. Banana. Yeah. No, no, you can't. Each week he eats around two portions of Donner meat, eight pieces of fried chicken, four portions of chips, two frozen pizzas, and 20 frozen nuggets. Wow, smiley faces. Worst of all, he'll guzzle 24 glasses of fizzy drink. Every seven days, he's basically eating two half kilo packets of sugar. And there's one big reason. He's eating what his mum eats. Yeah. Um, can I have a small donut meat with chips, with cheese and mayonnaise, please? 
I always have fast food, it's just quicker, easier. Someone's made it for you, you don't have to stand around waiting for it to cook. And it, it tastes nice. Is there not a bottle of coke? I usually order a kebab every night. Sometimes it's not always a kebab, it's like KFC or something else, but mainly it is kebabs. Teen mum Taylor had Harley when she was just 15. Sister Tiana followed two years later, and she combines being a single mum with studying part-time. Be careful, you. Taylor is frazzled, and Harley is becoming more of a handful every day. Stop it. <laughs> I said no! Recently, I've noticed that Harley is more hyperactive than he has been. It's probably due to the food that he's eating. I can see the chocolate. Oh, burgers. Should we go and get some pizza? Do you want pepperoni or cheese? Okay. Chicken. I got one of them. Pears. Uh, I like pears. You've never tasted a pear? French, Taylor. What about a white pear? Taylor's mum, Mandy, helps out during the week and has major concerns about what Taylor feeds Harley and herself. You've missed all the good food out, Taylor. It's all right. Yeah, Pasta. No, I don't like it. It takes no. ages to make. So if you're going to buy pasta, buy a pasta pot. Yeah. Can I have some of your chocolate, please? No. A little bite. No. Last time Taylor had a vegetable, it was from the kebab shop, deep fried in the form of chips with cheese on top. If she carries on the way she is, she's going to end up obese. So you never want to get fat? No, but if you carry on with your takeaways... <laughs> That's how it's going to go. Yeah, exercise. Well, how do you exercise? I'm running around after all that. To buy a bottle of liquid. And a packet of what's it, yeah. that's it. To exercise. Uh, Harley's diet really does need to change now because otherwise that's, he will think it's the norm to eat what Taylor's giving him. It's just not healthy. <laughs> Taylor should know more than most what her diet could be doing to Harley. Last year, she suffered a heart attack. They couldn't find any known explanation for it. They said the only thing they can put it down to was all the stress of pregnancy. I wouldn't ever, ever want to go through that ever again. It was the worst four days of my life. I think even the doctors and everyone was shocked. With her age, with her being so young, you just don't expect it to happen. Taylor has been told to change her diet to avoid any more stress to her heart. If I carry on eating the way I am, probably won't be here in ten years' time. Obviously, I think we have arguments because I am concerned about Taylor. If she carries on, it could lead to another heart attack. That could leave her children without a mum, basically. It's a tragedy that Mandy hopes can be avoided if Taylor takes action right now. Hi, Hello. Taylor. I'm Hayley, the dietitian. Hello. Come in. Hi, I've come to see you. After talking to her mum, Taylor agrees to see community dietitian Hayley Cooter, who specialises in paediatric nutrition. Can you see that number? That shows you what a big boy you are. One in five children in the UK are now overweight by the age of five. A junk food generation is a ticking time bomb for a, a really worrying amount of problems. I'm seeing a lot of overweight and obese children at the moment. I see tooth decay, constipation, rickets even from lack of vitamin D. These are all caused by an unbalanced diet. According to this, BMI. It is above average and we're going to need to watch his food intake. Yeah. Really. These takeaways um, is hardly having as well. Everything I've got he wants. Okay. And Stuff. if you say he can't have it? I don't think I've ever said he can't. I'll just give it him. Okay. Do you think he copies you? Yeah. Hayley is most concerned about the enormous amount of sugary cola that Harley is consuming. From this bowl of sugar, 
you might be able to measure out how much you think would be day. in his daily diet. Can I have a go? A little bit more. I'd say about that. Can you say about that? Yeah. Do you want to have a go? Because it's more than that, I'm afraid. Go, oh. oh, Harley knows. Keep going. That is oh. about how much sugar you, Mr. Harley, are eating in one day. It's about 150 grams there. Probably Can a little we bit more. eat that sugar? No. Harley is having almost four times the amount of sugar that is recommended for his age. Not surprising, as diet-wise, he's just a mini version of his mum. Do you think your sugar intake would be more or less? No, I think mine would be more. Can you show me how much more you think you're having in a day? Jeez. After this, I, I want to go again. About that. Okay. I'm afraid you're having a bit more than that. Should we try again? Yeah. Is this a day? This is in one day. Oh, no. I to keep, keep going. going. Oh my god. Yeah, that's it. That's 500 grams, Taylor, in one day. Taylor is having 10 times the recommended daily amount for a grown woman. Sugary foods give us instant bursts of energy. Um, they push our blood sugar levels up. We also crash. Our blood sugar levels go down and we end up tired and grumpy yeah. and irritable and teary and mad. Yeah. Do you think this goes on in your house? <laughs> that describes me. Yeah. Can you maybe explain for me why you think you eat like this? Um, it's probably sort of laziness. Do you think maybe if I could show you how to eat healthily and it was cheaper, would that, would that even interest you? Yeah, if I could save money and get more stuff for me. Yeah. Haley set some clear guidelines for a healthy diet to start straight away. It is going to be hard, but I'm going to try my best. And with Harley as well. I'm just not going to buy any stuff in. I'm going to have to be really strict with myself. She's forgotten that food and health are connected, so she has no idea that the sugar, the fat, the saturated fats, the salt that she's putting in her body um, is having any effect whatsoever on her health. In Cardiff, Sam Fish is facing a huge struggle to get Cuba on the right nutritional track. His current diet is likely to cause anemia, which in some cases can slow down a child's development. He's heading home, the effect that his diet that we have allowed him to have is affecting him. You know, he's got a blood test now, he could be anemic. It's obviously affecting his health. It is making me feel a bit guilty. Right, OK, we're just going to pop this little strap on his arm. It doesn't hurt, it's just a bit of pressure, OK? OK, yeah. Just pop this on a minute, mate. Put it nice and tight, OK? There we are. He's a good boy. No, he shouldn't feel that, OK? OK, yeah. You know. OK. Hey. Good boy. Nice and still. <laughs> nice and still. Nice and still. OK. Nice and still, okay, darling. Nice and still. OK. Uh, sorry. Um, sorry. OK, OK, OK. OK, darling. OK. <laughs> what makes them so upset is because they're being pinned down. Yeah. You know? That did not go well at all. It's traumatic for Cuba. It was traumatic for me. It's just, I feel quite so devastated now. The results will come through in a couple of weeks. Back at home, Sam is determined to start changing her family's diet. In you, we have cereal, Weetabix, Cheerios. There's raisins, there's raisins covered in yoghurt, there's breadsticks. Don't all boring foods. Well, if you're hungry, that's what's there. And there's one pack of biscuits, which are oat biscuits. So they're made with oats. And there's no chocolate. chocolate on them. You should get chocolate digestive systems. <laughs> Sam's also facing up to her fears of a messy kitchen and has been cooking fresh meals for the last two evenings. The problem is, Simon is finding it hard to cut out the junk. 
Yesterday, he was in charge of the kids. No, you didn't even make an effort, Simon. I was nearly in tears when I came home from work Friday. I was really, really deflated you with you. I think ever. you knew how disappointed I was. But I enjoyed my takeaway. Yeah, and I'm not saying, I don't think it's going to be realistic, to be honest with you, to get rid of everything. You know, if he is anemic, it's from his diet, really, isn't it? So we've got to take responsibility for that, Simon. Mm. Claire, get me fox and I'm going to cut up this. We um, got cakes. Oh, I can't believe you've eaten it. Good boy, you are. Hey, look at him eating that. Sam's hard work is paying off. He's enjoying it, ain't he? Cuba's actually eating for the first time ever. And it's not chips and it's not pepperamis and it's literally been what, two days? I got my for seconds. It's going now. Am I allowed seconds by Jane? Yeah, you're a growing man in you. Good. Just going that way. <laughs> <laughs> In Runcorn, home cooked meals are nowhere to be seen. The less time 19 year old Taylor spends cooking for Harley, the more time she can spend being a teenager. How are you getting on with it? What's he eating now instead of his dippers and smileys? He's still eating them, <laughs> but he's just like not having all the crap in between. Mm. That was his favourite word. Cake. cake. <laughs> yeah, it's like every time we used to take him out and that, he'd, he'd be the first one wanting to ask for a McDonald's. Oh. Can we go to Mackey's? <laughs> he like, oh. Oh. To celebrate, we should go out and just get smashed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> same old places, same old faces. <laughs> How many chicken dippers would you like? Three, like your smiley faces. One, two, three. Right, would you like to put them back for mummy and shut the, shut the drawer? Three weeks into what's meant to be a new routine, three-year-old Harley is still on his fast food diet. There you go. There's your smileys, your dippers and your sauce. I'll cut my dinner. Oh, so they're easier to eat? Yeah. What about your smileys? You want to try some of them? I haven't really been able to achieve any of the goals that Haley set because I've had things going on in my life and my mind's been preoccupied. When I first got them, I was like, yeah, I'm up for a challenge, I'll do this. And in my head, I was like, yeah, I will do this, I want to do this. But then the reality of life did, didn't fit in with my lifestyle. With difficult clients, dietitian Haley Cooter will sometimes use a more dramatic approach to drive the dangers home. And with Sugar Mad Harley, there's one immediate danger. Has he been to the dentist before? No, I'm scared of the dentist. You're scared of the dentist? Yeah, yeah they're scared What's me. That? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Nearly 30,000 children under five are admitted to hospital every year with severe tooth decay. You just see on the side of this tooth down here, is that little mark yeah. just on the side of the tooth there? And what those little marks are, are just very early signs of decay developing yeah. in the teeth. So to all these sugary drinks and the things are starting to actually have yeah. an impact on his teeth there now, OK? Well done, Harley. I've got some teeth over here, if you can have a little look at. Yeah. The dentist wants to show what can go wrong if you continue to feed your children fast food. This is classically through drinks because there's lots of the sugars washing over those front teeth. Can you see that little lump yeah. at the top up there? That's a big lump full of pus and an abscess on the tooth, so that's will be extremely painful for, the, for this yeah. child. This six-year-old is at risk of blood poisoning and will need at least six extractions. If he has to go to sleep to have his teeth yeah. removed, statistics say, you know, children do die from having that procedure, so it is really important that we try and avoid that happening, you know. It's a massive jolt for Taylor and a hard lesson about the harm she's doing to Harley. It shocked me, really, what the dentist said. I knew that it would be harming Harley's teeth, but I didn't realise how much it was affecting his teeth. But now he's, I'm just going to cut drinks out altogether, other than water or milk. And the same for me as well. 
big enough. Taylor finally agrees to take expert advice on board and get started on changing her and Harley's diet. She tells me that her mom and her friends and family are supporting her in this um, and, and yet she's not fully able to do it at the moment by herself so I do think a support group is going to be going to be useful even if it's just for some cooking um, or, or, or talking to other mums who are in a similar position. Taylor finally realises action is needed and is inspired to attend Parent Power a support group for young parents run by Action for Children at Halton Youth Service. We meet every Friday afternoon. We cook healthy alternatives to popular foods like pizzas, kebabs, cakes. Did you cook at home? I've tried. But, tried? Yeah, never set the house on fire. I've got it into me. I can't cook, but I probably could if I tried. It's easy. We did loads of different stuff. We've done spaghetti bolognese, we've done roast dinners. Oh. Healthy option pizzas. Mm. Looks like I've just gone out into my garden and decided to make a pizza. No, know, yeah, with the, the grass. <laughs> Taylor's freshly prepared pizza contains around 470 calories, whilst Harley's usual delivered variety would tot up a massive 3,000. So, would you like to, would you like to come to a group like this, or have you never thought to come to a group? I've been offered to come to different groups like this, but I always, I don't know why. I always think people are going to judge me for being a young single mum. Before I come here, I used to just order out and put stuff in the, um, uh, That's like, all I did. And the, the books started coming in here, and that I started eating like pasta and stuff like that. I would have never actually sat and thought, yeah, let's try this. I will definitely come again. And then it's something I can take home with me. Me and Harley can do it. You can actually sit and say, oh, well, I made my tea, I made this. And then that'll bring us closer together in a healthy way. Okay. In Surrey, Cara and Gareth try and feed 19-month-old Michael healthy home-cooked food every day. He hasn't touched his toast. Since contracting meningitis a year ago, they're over-controlling at mealtimes and Michael's rebelling. Look at this mess. Look at this mess, Michael. I want you to eat some Nana. Nana next. Michael's been referred to feeding expert Lucy Thomas to give Cara and Gareth some practical support. My classes are all about offering parents with young children the opportunity to come and explore and experiment with fruit and vegetables. Anyone who doesn't get to feel something and maybe smell it if you're not quite sure what it's like, it's not like you're not just going to pick something up and put it straight in your mouth, are you? So it's giving Michael those experiences in a fun way and making it really positive for him. Fantastic! Michael! Michael, do you want to come and pick a beetroot? Oh, yes! Come on, then. Come and pick a beetroot. One for you and one for Daddy. One and another one. That's it. Take one for Daddy. Take it back to Daddy, Michael. That's it. Oh, we're going to have three. We don't... Take it back to Daddy. Yay! Well done, Michael. I would like everybody to brush their teeth. Cheese! And Without the stress and pressure of his usual mealtimes, Michael becomes adventurous with the fruit and veg. Stir, stir, stir the soup. We stir it round and round. We stir, stir, we blow, we kiss. We make the slurping sound. Can I hear the slurping sound? There's some lovely soup slurping going on here today. Has Michael had beetroot soup before? Wow, fantastic. It's a mini triumph for Michael. He's touched his food, had a play and a little nibble. Oh, it was brilliant today. Uh, really loved it, really enjoyed it. Michael really took to it very well. He's picked up a few things already, which I think we'll definitely do at home until next week. It'll be coming every week now. Over the next week, Gareth tries to take the classroom fun into the home. You're going to eat it with Daddy now, yeah? Come on. You're going to come back, have some more. Come on, please, come on. You eat some, I eat some. Come on. You try some more? No? Mm. Will you brush your teeth? 
Do you not like any of it? You did the other day. Hmm? Did the other day. Have a bite. Cara, this isn't going down well. Spitting nearly every bit out. Oh, you're joking. Michael's making small changes, but his parents are not. The fruit and vegetable that we just tried there, I don't... I'm not keen on that anyway. Just a matter of confidence for me doing it as well, I suppose. Cara and Gareth's relationship is still suffering, and mealtimes are still chaos. Go to bed. Well, then be a good boy. Come on. Come on. Be a good boy. Thankfully, their first consultation with Dr. Catherine is scheduled. What particularly is it that, that worries you? I don't know. You? It's just that uh, he's not going to reach his milestones and mm. maybe miss out on things and be mm. a bit slow. And... I get us really scared when he doesn't eat enough. I think he's like, he won't be able to tell us. Mm. Um, He'll get thinner and thinner, and I don't know. I just like I think mm. he's gonna get so hungry, he's gonna starve. Mm. You know, mm. <laughs> it's silly, but. Mm. And you're you're right there with the the sort of emotion that was a, around when he was ill. Mm. Yeah, you tend to think the worst, you know. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is he unhappy? Does he look at those got energy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is he reaching his milestones? See, we're silly because we know we know he's all this is. We know he's okay. Yeah. Like he, yes, I think we're we're too quick to get stressed, aren't we? Yeah. And yeah. Start yeah. fretting. <laughs> and, yeah. You know. Children are naturally suspicious of food and use all their senses to work out what's okay to eat. We're going to play a game together, and I hope it's going to be fun. And it's about experiencing how Michael feels when he's presented with food that he has not a clue about. Hopefully what Cara and Gareth are going to do is feel what it's like for Michael. I just have to warn you that some of them are not edible. It's a bit worrying when you so, say some of them aren't edible. That smells like pain. So would you eat that? No. no, no. I wouldn't eat that. Well <laughs> done. <laughs> it smells foody. I can't put that thing, right? But... It's not It's not bad. <laughs> Shall I put you out of your misery? Yeah. <laughs> it's um, an iron tonic. Ah. Oh. You know, tonic oh kind of Because I was going to say, it does smell irony and yes. taste a bit irony. Yeah. Yes. Now, if you're Michael and I put some food in front of you <laughs> and I say, eat that, it's good for you, <laughs> what's Michael going to do? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so true, yeah. He's, he he's going to reach out, he he's going first. to touch it and yeah. feel it, and he might do some squishing. Yeah. And that's really important. That's not bad manners, that's what is this? <laughs> Children, when they're presented with a new food, need on average 16 tastes of it. 16 times to actually get used to it. Wow. It's so strange to see it from Michael's point of view, new foods, mm -hmm. tasting it, smelling, feeling. Quite funny as well. <laughs> <laughs> In Cardiff, Mum Sam has been sticking to the new regime for a month. But today, Dad Simon is in charge of Cuba and the girls. What we're going to do, we're going to be a bit naughty now. Um, I always treat my girls, especially on a Friday, we always sneak off to the cake shop, uh, no matter where we are, and um, I will treat them with some cakes, because... Simon is sneaking in snacks behind Sam's back. But we don't tell Mummy, do we, girls? No. No. Come on, then, what are we having? Oh, look at this. Which one's you on? You got everything? Yeah. Come on, then, let's get back to the car quick. Enjoying that? I got it. A chocolate cake with cream I have. I can't wait. Can I change the um, chicken tikka for another lamb pasanda, piece? Back at home, there's more fast food on the menu as the fish family are tucking in to their one weekly takeaway. Right, let's give Cuba some more chips. He has my chips for all week. 
It's meant to be there as a reward for all their good work. We haven't had one of these for ages now, we girls, since Jane's come along. Yeah. And Jane's banned all our takeaways. <laughs> yeah, you look happy now, don't you, happy chaffy? You got your bees? Are they nice? Mmm, yum, 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 in Cuba's term. Have we missed our takeaways, girls? Yeah. I have. I've been actually looking forward to this all day. Oh, Cuba's getting stuck in. Oh, Cuba. It should be a time for celebration. Instead, the truth behind Simon's secret cake raid comes out. All right, Jane's taking one treat, right? That was it. And then you buy like three or four cakes each. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. She had like two gingerbread men. She had a chocolate flake. She had a custard slice, and she had one of those um, cherry biscuits. Mm. That's disgusting. And actually, she ate them all in one evening. Daddy's trying his best. There's still a huge amount to do. Health visitor Jane's making her second visit to the family home. What are you most missing from your diet? Put it this way, mm. I think if Sam wasn't here and she was in work, I could have quite easily checked all the kids in the car and gone to uh, get some chicken quite easy. You just succumbed to temptation? Oh, yeah. I've got a little challenge for you, Simon. Oh. <laughs> what is it? What I'd is like challenge? you to go and buy your most favourite fast food family takeaway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the fried chicken and chips. Do I get to eat it? And then what I'm going to try and do is to put you off it. Ah, oh, like you know, this ah. as you're eating it. Yeah. I'm just going to good tell luck. you a few home truths about it. Okay, good luck. Because <laughs> uh, I don't get put on. They bristle easy. in there. But, uh, oh, I don't care. I'll eat me. Pumped up chicken with water. Oh, on your way then. No problem. <laughs> don't forget the beans, babe. Oh. <laughs> Simon reunites himself with a super-sized bucket of fried chicken in lightning quick time. I think this is going to be really hard giving up this. You couldn't resist, could you? No, I couldn't. Does it still look appealing to you? <laughs> it does smell nice, though. Does it, it doesn't smell nice to me. It smells very, very greasy, really. There's more than eight pieces in there, Simon. Yeah, that's the spicy wing, but comes with eight piece, pieces of You had 16 chicken. pieces of chicken. So would you mm. normally have bought this amount of chicken? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's quite a lot of chicken, isn't it, really? Yes. Oh, gross. Look, you can actually squeeze it out. Can you? Yes. There. Yes. yes, look at it, it's all bubbling to the surface. Oh. It's pretty gross, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, oh, rivers, see, well, rivers, a bit rivers of grease running down my hand. How gross is that? This should not be all mm. your daily diet. This is food gorged in harmful fat. What exactly does that mean for Cuba? It's gross, isn't it? <laughs> so, this mm. is the amount of saturated fat that Cuba was getting in his diet every week. Nothing. He should have been having about a fifth of that amount. Okay, so it's really bad news. This is a heart attack diet. Yeah. Because what we're storing up is health problems for the future. Sure. We've had this like three times a week in one week, haven't we? Oh, yeah. Maybe more. Less than we yeah. had ever takeaways on top of this. Don't look so tasty now, do they? It can be fried, generally speaking. Next, Jane wants to make sure sisters Cleo and Shay aren't hiding away any snacks for a foraging Cuba. What other contraband have we got here? Goodness me. Anything, Anything under the pillow? Yeah. <laughs> and what's in the bin? Um, oh, my word! <laughs> oh, look at this. Wave bye bye to your sweeties then. <laughs> Old habits are hard to break. It might seem tough on the girls, but Jane has Cuba and the whole family's future health in mind. <laughs> In Surrey, contraband is nowhere to be seen. There we go. Now, what you can do, Gareth, is you can show Michael how you can break the broccoli. With the help of feeding expert Lucy Thomas, Michael has spent the last two weeks exploring healthy food in the home. And now when it comes to the table, it won't be just something that's put down there yeah. and, oh, it's time to start eating. Okay. Tom? Wow. Thanks. 
I tell you what, but what we can do, what we can do here is Michael wants to keep a piece of the broccoli. Okay. So let's give Michael a piece of the broccoli to hold. Here we go, look, Michael. Would you like to hold one? No? Okay, well, we're going to give it to Mummy to cook. Yeah. And we're, oh, also, we're also going to put some of these in, aren't we? Look, you shake them. Look, you shake them. What did you want the broccoli for? Is it because it's your broccoli? Is that what it is? Is it your broccoli? Yeah, because you did all the cutting. Thank you. Yes. Oh, Lovely. Thank you. You can have that bit. Uh oh. That's for Michael. That's for Michael, okay? Great, let's go and take it to your daddy. Come on then. Come here. Yeah. Michael is continuing to make small changes every day. Kara and Gareth are much more relaxed with his progress. Seven weeks after her first visit, psychologist Dr. Catherine Dendy is doing a final check on Michael. Dip, dip, dip. <gasps> what? That's it. That's it. Good boy. That's it. Yeah, good boy. Does it crunch? Oh. He's just picked up the biggest bit of broccoli and put it in his mouth and he's munching away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he'll eat mounds of broccoli. He I mean, will, yeah, that's right. He'll delve right in. Yes. Yeah. He's like a different boy at the moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. it's such a big change. I think before, when we talked about the memories of him being diagnosed and going into the hospital, this was understandably really upsetting. Yeah, we'd never really openly talked about menin his meningitis before to anybody, oh. but after we had done, we actually went home and talked about it ourselves. Oh. Um, it's a big help just to just to get things out. And, yeah, definitely. And, talk, you know? and then I think we was bottling it up too much just to see the way he is now. Yeah. You know, he's, he's obviously right. picked up on everything so far, and I, I don't think he's going to have many problems if, yeah, if, yeah. If, if at all. And you two together look much happier. Mm, stressed all the time, haven't we? Yeah, definitely. Now we're relaxed with each other and don't argue um, as much. As much. <laughs> <laughs> It helps because we're getting married. <laughs> Great! Yeah. I think in the future you're going to need to really be firm, not only with Michael, but actually with yourselves as well. I think we've, we've learned a lot ourselves. And Definitely, yeah. I think, I think we'll be able to do it. We'll do it. Yeah. In Runcorn, it's a week after the cooking class, and Taylor is for the first time in her life starting to cook at home. What am I doing? I'm cutting up tomatoes. It's healthier for her heart and healthier for Harley. There to go and our super healthy pizzas. Wow, I'm shocked at your mum making her own pizzas like this. I'm clever, aren't I? Yeah. Do you want me to show you what to do now? Yeah. Right, you get this, and then you squeeze some in the middle. Your turn. Yeah. And then you get the spoon and spread it all over. Right, so let's go and put these in the oven. I used to think that I couldn't cook, but it's evidently clear that I can cook. I didn't ever think I'd be able to do this in my life. I deserve, like, a certificate or something, like a medal. Oh, they're done! <coughs> How exciting! Yeah, let's get them all out first. Yeah. That's a bit... <gasps> His diet still isn't perfect, but he's cut down over half his sugar intake and is a much calmer child. It's good, isn't it? Doesn't seem as bad as he was in the beginning, probably because he's not getting as much junk in him. I feel so proud of myself for making these. I understand now like why my mum was moaning at me. I need to start eating healthy because of my heart, and if I just ignore the fact of what happened, I can't eat how I did, there's more chance that it will happen again and they don't want that for the kids. I've realised now that the problem is lack of motivation and just laziness, really, but now I've had people there telling me what to do, showing me how to do things, and I've not just been left to my own devices. I now know that I can do things, so then now I will carry on to do them. And my mum will probably still be there giving me a kick up the backside, telling me I need to do these things. Harley, which pizza's nicer? That pizza 
or the pizza that comes with the kebab. This one. Cuba. Come on, lovely. In Cardiff, Cuba's blood test for anemia has finally come through. He's borderline anemic, which I sort of knew when the wake up call, see meeting Jane, going through everything, he sort of brought home. So God knows how bad he would have been if we carried on with the old diet. He would have been severely anemic within another year, wouldn't he? So that's something that I'm glad we've nipped in a bit then. The fish family have totally changed their eating habits. Simon's curbed his fast food cravings and Sam is triumphing with her healthy home cooking. Wash your fingers. Cooking every day now, to be honest with you, which is not too bad. Cuba's new diet is improving his sleep patterns, and most importantly, he's now well on the way to beating his anemia. Come on. Hello. Whoa! What we were giving him before with um, the fried chicken and stuff like that was way too much for him. We didn't think it was affecting him as much as it was. Um, when you actually see it for yourself, then you know, you're going to change that. Although Sam may never quite get over her messy kitchen. Look at that! It's yeah, really need to make that mess. What do I say to you, mate? Eh? That will get washed up. Yeah, but I just don't understand. Ultimately, the whole family and, of course, Cuba are on the path to a healthier future. Looking back at it all now, it was nothing to do with Cuba, absolutely nothing. So the problem definitely laid with us in that we didn't take control of control of our baby. Basically, he was controlling us, so it was definitely, definitely with us.